Hey, what's up everybody? This is Caroline. Welcome back to the third part of Beginning Metal. In this video, we'll draw a triangle onto the screen. Even though this sounds simple, it will clarify the sequence of operations that we have to do to get that triangle rendering on the GPU. At the end of this video, we'll have this app with a red triangle. The reason why every graphics tutorial starts with a triangle is because Metal only processes points, lines, and triangles. Triangles have some really neat properties. A triangle has the least number of points that can be drawn in two dimensions. In other words, it's the only shape that's always flat because all its points are in the same plane. When it's divided, it becomes two triangles and it's the only polygon that can't intersect itself. When you create models in a program like Blender, you'll generally model with quads, which work well with subdivision algorithms. A quad is just two triangles. And later, we'll go through model import, when models are converted to triangles for you. On the left here is a head in a modeling program with quads. I've imported this into the app that we'll have created later on. On import, the model's converted to triangles. And on the right, this is how the GPU draws this same head. Let's have a look at how we describe and render a triangle. Metal coordinates are a squashed cube with two units width, two units height, and one unit depth. The top left in two dimensions is minus one, one, and the bottom right is one minus one. The center is zero, zero. The first thing we have to do is set up a structure containing information about the vertices. Each vertex needs three floats to describe it. We're only dealing with two dimensions here, X and Y, and we'll just set Z as zero for the moment. We then create a metal buffer with these vertices. Here we specify that the buffer contains the bytes of the vertices array with a length of the number of items in the array multiplied by the size of a float. Earlier, we talked about the graphics pipeline and how you need to set up the pipeline state before you start. We create the pipeline state along with the metal vertex buffer at the start of the app. The pipeline state will hold the shader functions needed to render the object, along with some other settings. We used a descriptor in the last video for setting up the command encoder. Metal uses descriptors for setting up several metal objects, and it's really important to understand exactly what a descriptor is. Descriptors are like blueprints. Say, for example, you were ordering a robot that could have certain colors. You'd make a list, such as a blue head, a red nose, an orange aerial. You'd then send that list off and get your robot back. The list is now completely independent from the robot. If you change the head to green on the list, it doesn't affect the color of your current robot. So when you set up a descriptor, you're setting up the list of properties you want your object to have. Then you create the object from that descriptor. If you subsequently change the descriptor properties, you're only changing the list, not the original object. But you can reuse that descriptor to create a second object later on. To render this triangle, we do need to set up simple shader functions for the pipeline. And I'll go into shader functions and shader libraries in a later video and not go too much into detail now. Here we set up a pipeline descriptor saying what the vertex and fragment functions are and make the pipeline state from the descriptor. Here's what your renderer looks like from last time. We set up a command buffer and one command encoder that holds all our commands for the GPU. We now have to set up the state and send the vertex buffer to the GPU and tell the GPU to draw those vertices. 
First, we set the render pipeline state using the pipeline state we created earlier. Remember that the pipeline state will tell the GPU what shader functions to use. It is possible that you'll need to use different shader functions for different objects that you render. So you may need to set up multiple pipelines, which will mean that you'll need to send the GPU multiple commands, each with its own command encoder. We then tell the GPU to use our vertex buffer. The offset is the starting byte. You can see that if we had more complex buffers, we could change the offset to start somewhere else in the buffer. Internally, there's an index table of buffers, and the at index specifies which entry in the table the buffer is at. You can have up to 31 buffers. Finally, we set up the command to draw. We specify that we're drawing the triangle primitive rather than a point or a line. This bit of code doesn't actually do the drawing. Remember, we're encoding a list of commands that get sent off in a batch to the GPU. It's not until the commit at the end of the method that the GPU takes over. So now let's put all that together in the demo and create this red triangle. This is where we left off after the last challenge. We have our renderer rendering a green screen. To render the triangle, we first need to set up the vertices in the renderer. We'll need properties for the pipeline state and the metal vertex buffer. Now we'll set up a method that will create the vertex buffer. Here I've created a metal buffer that holds the vertices from the vertices array. Each entry in the array is a float, so the length of the buffer is the number of vertices in the array times the size of a float. I'll call this method from init. To set up the pipeline state, we'll need to have a couple of shader functions. I'm going to create the simplest possible functions and we'll go further into them later on. First create a new metal file and call it shader. Inside this file, we leave the safe world of Swift. We're only going to be using metal shading language inside this file. But it's not too hard and you'll soon get used to it. If you know C++, it'll be really easy for you as Metal Shading Language, or MSL, is based on the C++14 specification. Create a vertex function. This is a vertex function, so we prefix it with vertex. We're going to return a float 4 for the position of the vertex, and we'll call this function vertex shader. The parameters are the vertices array that we created just now and the vertex ID of the current vertex being processed on the GPU. Here we could do all sorts of math to change the position of the vertex, but for the moment we'll just return the same value as we send into the vertex function. The output of this function is the input of the next stage in the pipeline. The GPU assembles the vertices into triangle primitives and the rasterizer then takes over and splits our triangle into fragments. The fragment function, the one that returns the color of each fragment, is even easier than the vertex function. It's a fragment function, so we prefix it with fragment. We're returning a half 4, which is a smaller float 4, and calling the function fragment shader. We're just going to return a red color. The numbers are standard red, green, blue, and alpha. Back in the renderer, we need to set up the pipeline state. So I'll create a new method for this. All our shader functions will be stored in a library. So we set up a new library 
and store the vertex and fragment functions that we just created. Xcode will compile these functions when we compile the project and they're held in a library all compiled and ready to use. Now we can create the pipeline descriptor. The descriptor contains the reference to the shader functions and we can create the pipeline state from this descriptor. And I'll call this method from the initializer. We're now ready to issue the draw calls. In the delegate draw method, I'll unwrap the pipeline state, make sure it's not nil, and enter the code that I showed you previously on the slide. Set the pipeline state for the command encoder. and set the vertex buffer at index 0. And set up the command to draw. This command doesn't do the drawing, that doesn't happen until all the commands are encoded and we commit the command buffer. Build and run. And we get this lovely red triangle. Going over what we just did, these are the vertices of the triangle. They're stored in a metal buffer, which we send to the GPU in the draw method. The vertex function processes the real position of each vertex. And the fragment function returns the red color. Your challenge is to make a second triangle you're going to create this yellow square. It may look as, just as if you've cleared the screen with a yellow color, but in the challenge document, I'll show you how you can visualize the triangles that the GPU is displaying. That's it for this video tutorial. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to send constant values to the GPU. And we'll also do some animation. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.